Let's talk about the Spanish Grand Prix. It was an immaculate start. All eyes were on Lando Norris as he took his second ever pole position in Formula 1 history. Everybody's looking at him. Max Verstappen is used to being on the front row of the grid. We have these two childhood friends and people that have raced each other for years head to head on the front row of the grid. What's going to happen between them? Is Norris going to keep the lead? Is Max Verstappen going to take the lead like he's done so many times before? The five lights go out. The race starts. They both get off amazingly. They're both headed into turn one, weaving down the straights, trying to edge out some sort of advantage over the other. And then out of nowhere, George Russell from P4 on the grid gets the slipstream of all slipstreams and just slingshots past both of them taking the lead. Out of nowhere, George Russell is now leading the Grand Prix after turn one. He wasn't on anybody's radar at the start of the race, and yet here he is, and it was incredible. I don't think anybody expected that. The Mercedes were looking good all weekend, but nobody expected them to be as amazing as they were at the start right there. That was incredible, genuinely. But as incredible as it was, just a few laps later, Max Verstappen takes the lead back. And we are once again in a scenario where Max Verstappen is leading a Grand Prix. Everybody knows this scenario. Max builds up a lead and every other racer on the grid just runs out of time trying to catch him. And that's much of the case here. Max took the lead early on and then really wasn't challenged at the front at all. Like with how strong the McLarens and the Mercedes were looking all weekend, you expected a little bit more of a race. And don't get me wrong, there were other leaders during this race. Um, George, like I said, led at the start. Um... When Max came in for the pits, Norris was leading for a little bit, but that was because he was a pit stop down. But once everybody was really on equal pit stops and everybody had gotten their footing, nobody really challenged Max the whole, the whole Grand Prix. Towards the end of the race, Lando was putting in much better lap times than him, and he was making up a lot of time. 10 laps to the end of the Grand Prix, Verstappen was leading by 5.3 seconds, and Norris was really tackling that lando was doing everything he could to catch up to verstappen and he was doing like fucking god's work doing that but he just ran out of time the grand prix wasn't long enough if it would have lasted maybe two three more laps i think lando would have taken the lead from verstappen i think this whole weekend the mclarens had the better cars than the red bulls i think the red bulls might I say, might have even been the third best car on the grid because the Mercedes also looked amazing. But if we head back towards the start of the Grand Prix, after a few laps, the Ferraris had their own incident. Ferrari has historically been a team that lets their drivers fight, which I love, don't get me wrong. Unless it ends up with my favorite driver crashing, then I hate that. But I do genuinely like seeing them race. And going into turn one, they had a little bit of an incident. An incident, if you will. Signs comes around the outside of Charles into turn one, which is probably the best overtaking opportunity around this lap. And as Carlos is making him pass, he squeezes Charles on the inside. And if you ask me, it was a bit of a squeeze. Carlos should have left him a little bit more room. He kind of pushed him all the way onto the grass. And because Carlos was the one that was doing the passing there, he, he was very much aware that his teammate was there and should have known, hey, I've got to leave some space for him. And there were radio messages from each of the drivers. The commentators commented on it because, you know, commentators commentate, that's their job. And if you ask me in my professional stewardess opinion, realistically, it's a racing incident, but because I like Charles more than I like Carlos, I'm going to say it's a 15 second time penalty for Carlos. Moving on, George Russell comes into the pits and we see a big puff of smoke. And that's because he locked up coming into the pits and that was not a rare occurrence this whole weekend almost every driver when they came into their pit stop was locking up i don't know if it has something to do with the track or if every driver was really trying to maximize their entry speed into the pits but so many of them were locking up almost nobody got a penalty for speeding in the pit lane except for nico hulkenberg who got a five second penalty which is really unfortunate for him because he ended up finishing the race in 11th place now granted he was more than five seconds away from 10th but maybe if he didn't have that penalty in the back of his mind he would have pushed a little bit more to maybe try and make that place up but like i said almost every driver was locking up coming into the pits and i'm surprised not more of them got a penalty but speaking of george coming into the pits the same time he pitted carlos also pitted behind him and because George during this pit stop actually didn't have a good pit stop, we almost saw Carlos overtaking him in the pits. 
This was a very clear example of uh, the pit crews trying to work wonders and making their own overtakes happen. Because we literally see George and Carlos almost neck and neck, wheel to wheel down the pit straight. Now, if I were in that position, I would have, I would have pinned it. Just speed, take the, just take the, uh, you know, take the five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. What's George gonna do? Speed too? You'll, you'll gain five seconds in the pit lane. Just, just risk it, you know? But yeah, I think George is really lucky to have gotten away with still holding on to the lead from Carlos because if his pit was literally a tenth of a second slower, two tenths of a second slower, he would have lost that position. But yeah, most of the front runners at this point have pitted except for Lando and Charles. Lando and Charles decided to extend their first stint for a little bit, which I am a big fan of. I am a fan of long stints. I think they work wonders. But this particular time, I think they were losing a lot of time. I don't think it worked as well as they wanted it to, but I, I like that they went for it. I think maybe if they would have stayed out even longer, they could have cut an entire pit stop off of their strategy and... They could have made something work. It might have worked out. Who knows? They didn't do it. And I think Charles actually shares my same sentiment because we heard him on the radio complaining about the plan that they were on. Why are we on flat A? So maybe Charles also wanted to go longer. Maybe he wanted to pit sooner. I don't know. But I just wish Charles was a little bit more assertive when it comes to making calls in the team. We've seen it from Carlos before where Ferrari makes a strategy call and Carlos is like, no, that's fucking stupid. I'm not doing that. And I feel like Charles doesn't do that. Charles is very much, all right, let's go for it. You guys probably know best. You have all the information. I'm going to trust you. And sometimes it ends up fucking him. I know Charles is a great driver. He's better than I'll ever be. And the strategist that these teams are smarter than I'll ever be. But I just wish Charles would have a little bit more pushback. Like just be, be your own man, you know, like push be assertive, make your own strategies, make your own calls for once, because sometimes it might work out for you. And, and sometimes it won't, but sometimes it will. And at least you'll only have yourself to blame instead of somebody else if it goes wrong. But let's go back to talking about the Mercedes because genuinely the Mercedes were fucking on it this weekend. I'm talking so many overtakes. The Mercedes are fighting the Ferraris. The Mercedes are fighting the other Mercedes. The Mercedes are fighting the McLarens. They're really only not fighting the Red Bulls. And that's because Max Verstappen is so far ahead that they can't fight him. And Sergio Perez was so far behind, they can't fight him. But the Mercedes came to race in Spain. I mean, Lando and George had a battle that lasted for like half of the lap. I mean, all the way from turn one to turn six, turn seven. It was incredible. And a few laps later, both George and Lewis have an overtake going into turn one on their respective battle partners. I don't remember who exactly they were, but the TV director perfectly caught both Mercedes overtaking both of the other cars at the same time into the same turn. It was actually an incredible shot. I would love to give as much praise as I can to the Mercedes team, but I am a fucking staunch Mercedes hater. So fuck them. If only the Ferraris came to race this weekend and if only the Ferraris didn't double DNF last weekend, maybe I would feel better about a P5 and P6 this weekend. But the middle of the race and almost all the way to the end wasn't really that exciting. Not a lot happened. On lap 60, Alex went into the gravel and from what I recall, he's the only driver that had an incident like that the entire race. But ultimately, it wasn't really a good weekend for Williams anyway and I don't think he lost too much in terms of positions, I mean time, obviously, but the Williams weren't anywhere notable. But because it was a multiple pit stop race and George did pit again, he was on hard tires at the end of the race and Charles was on soft. So on the very last lap of the race, we see Charles making a charge on George Russell. In all of the preceding laps, he had been working hard taking away time from George's lead on him. And it's on the final lap and we go into turn one and he's just a little bit too far away to really make the move work. And Charles finally gets a little bit ambitious and goes for another overtake and a late breaking opportunity and he locks up his fronts again. It was just a little lock up, but it was just enough to know that the overtake's not gonna happen. And all of the drivers cross the line, Charles doesn't get the position and finishes exactly where he started in P5. Max Verstappen crossed the line in P1, who almost lost to Lando Norris. Lando was also catching up to Max the whole race the same way Charles was to George, and Lando was taking a significant chunk of time out of Max's lead. Genuinely, I think if the race was one or two laps longer, Lando would have won the race. The McLarens looked like the best car on the grid. and. 
the Mercedes looked like the second best car on the grid. Dare I say that the Red Bull wasn't even the second best. The Red Bull was the third best car on the grid this weekend. And I think that has put some amount of shock into Max Verstappen and maybe everybody else that works there. Because once Max pulls into Park Fermi and he gets out of his car and starts to celebrate, he celebrates like this win actually means something to him. Usually Max wins a race and he's just like, oh, that was a nice race. It's cool. But this time he jumped out of his car. He celebrates and he jumped into his teammates arms or his uh, his pit crew's arms. And it seems like it meant something to him because now there's a lot of cars that are actually fighting him for the win. And I think Max and Red Bull are starting to realize that we might not be as dominant as we're used to being. 2024 started off with Max winning like six in a row. And then these last few races, teams have come out of nowhere and are really challenging at the front of the field. And genuinely, this season is up for grabs. It is not just the Max Verstappen runaway show. But that's really about it. See ya.